Why do you think this movie sucks so bad? One of my biggest issues with It Ends With Us when I read it as a book is that I felt like I was sold a story under false pretenses. I thought that it was a love story. I thought it was a smutty love story. And I read it on my honeymoon. And next thing I knew, I finished that book and I said, mm, this isn't what I thought it was gonna be. And that's exactly how they're doing the marketing for the movie, It Ends With Us too. You have Blake Lively out here looking gorgeous, looking stunning, there's florals, it's all aesthetically pleasing. And it tricks you into thinking that you are going into a rom-com, a traditional romance, a nice love story that's gonna make you feel something. And this movie will make you feel something because, spoiler alert, but it shouldn't be a spoiler alert because there should be an actual trigger warning on both the book and the movie. This is a story about domestic violence. Oh. This is not a rom-com. This is a domestic violence movie. This is an intimate partner violence movie. And story, and book. And that is the, that's the entirety of it. That's the purpose of this story being told. And I remember when I read the book, one of the things that made me think that it was just a fun little like frivolous story was the author was selling coloring books that were themed to this book. And I was like, oh, what a smart little wait, wait, wait. like extra, making some extra money on this book that's super popular because her books took off on TikTok. Uh, this book came out in 2016, but it really shot into the, everyone's reading this, all women are reading this um, after it became really popular on Book Talk. And so then there's these coloring books attached to it. And I'm like, oh, what a standard beach read. What another, this woman writes, Colleen Hoover, if she does one thing well, she writes sex. Okay, good enough that you can get lost in it. No smutty beach reads are great books. You're not here for great writing. You're just here to be generally entertained. But then she comes in and not only along with bad writing, some smut and domestic violence. And that's not what we're being sold from this movie. And I think it leads to a lot of the drama that is circulating around it. We don't know exactly what has happened between Justin Baldoni, who is the director and the lead actor who plays the abuser in the movie. He bought the rights to the book back in 2019. This is a project that he really wanted to work on and he's been like very intentional in how he's talked about domestic violence in the press cycles. He hasn't done press with the rest of his cast, a cast who people have pointed out all unfollowed Justin Baldoni on various social media sites. They didn't do pictures together at the premiere. If you go through the Getty images of the It Ends With Us premiere in New York, you can't find any pictures of him with the rest of his cast members. So there's clearly a rift. And now this morning, he has hired the PR agency that repped Johnny Depp in his trial with Amber Heard. And I'm not saying that to connect like nefarious things happening with Justin Baldoni, just to say he feels the need of having a really tip top PR firm right now because there is this, this internet war going on of people trying to figure out the mystery of what happened between these people. And some assume that Blake Lively, who is a producer on the movie, had a different creative vision than Justin Baldoni and perhaps Blake Lively, along with her husband, Ryan Reynolds, who had some creative input along the way too, uh, took this in a direction different than what Justin Baldoni saw it as. What could the difference be? I don't know because I think my biggest issue with it is that the story, like the meat of the story, mm. there's something there. Like there is an, an interesting conversation, a necessary conversation to be had about, you know, nice looking people who do horrible things in their relationships, who are abusive, who hit their partners, who then gaslight their partners into thinking, well, maybe he didn't hit me, maybe it was an accident. Maybe he didn't push me down the stairs, maybe I tripped, stuff like that. So there is, <laughs> yes. This is such a convoluted, this is such a convoluted, this is how I describe this. So Chris wouldn't come with, he would have come with me if I asked him to, but he would, did not desire to see this movie based on the fact that I sell it as a domestic violence story with a homeless love story subplot. Oh. We don't, we don't need all those things combined. Wow. So because there's so much, wow. there's no, this was one of the flattest movies I've ever seen. There's no depth to it. It jumps in timelines. The Does it jump in timelines in the book? No, not really. I mean, it's so they, it's a they, little they more fleshed that, out in the book. They took the the liberty in doing doing that for the movie, I guess, to save time and to try and fit as much in there as they they could. <sighs> I knew that I wasn't going to care. I figured that I wasn't going to care for this movie because I did not care for the book. However, 
I truly thought I was going to walk into that movie theater yesterday and at least cry. I was gonna have to reckon with the fact of, because I do think it's an interesting conversation to be had. A book, in this case, that is not very well written because I don't like the writing style of Colleen Hoover. Here's, here's how you know. This is what she names her characters. Lily Bloom, she owns a flower shop. <laughs> Ryle Kincaid. Oh, wait, wait, Ryle Kincaid. I don't he's know a he neurosurgeon. Does. Okay. Who might beat women? Ah, uh, he sounds like a woman beating him. How about Atlas Corrigan? Is he a map like a? He's a homeless he, kid. Cause he's lost. He's, he's lost. To, he's got Gotta no direction. He's got no direction. Got no, no no direction there. These are some other notable Colleen Hoover characters through her other books. I've read four Colleen Hoover books, so by no means do I want to call myself an expert of Colleen Hoover writing. But, but you're I, not a novice. I at least have. I'm not just coming here to hate from the outside. I'm in it. I've read these books. Yeah, hey, hey, listen. As a as a known hater, the best place to hate from is on the inside. Thank you. Get yeah, hating on the outside is pointless. No, That's why I went to the, the movie inside. yesterday. Get I was I was an informant. Hate. I was trying to have a Love more informed inside. opinion. Verity. Who? Verity. Okay. It's also the name of the book. All right. Verity. Six seven. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Six seven. Is the height of the person whose name is? Ridge. Way. Merit. Based. Lowen. Who? Leeds. How about, how about Lakin? Who? Lakeland? Lakin. Lakin. DM? Like direct message? Cruz? Tom? Chunk? Hunk? Chastin? Who? <laughs> Chastin. <laughs> Bea? What? Benton. <laughs> and then Lily Bloom, who owns a flower shop, and Ryle Kincaid, who is an abusive neurosurgeon. Oh, and don't forget the homeless boy, Atlas Corrigan. Well, don't spoil the whole movie. I'm not. What's the, is the sex scene good, at least? No. Okay. I think it's written better. That's one of the things where I feel, and this is, okay, this is my actual biggest problem with all of this. Because I feel like a hypocrite. Because all I want is for more people to read. I'm a nerd. I love to read. Mm. Ask Chris. I just want to talk to him about my books. Poor Chris comes home from work. I go, guess what I read in my book today? He goes, God, yeah, why are we doing this again? <laughs> and I'm like, I just want, I would love for you to read the book with me so I would have somebody to talk to about the current book I'm reading. So here's a situation where a ton of women are obsessed with this author. They are reading this book, all her books. There's a sequel to this book, unfortunately. So there's going to be a sequel, assumingly, of this movie as so well. The, the sequel to the book is already out. Yes, okay. yes. It came out like a year and a half ago. I did not read the sequel. I hated this book so much I could not read the sequel and come back to these characters' lives. I just couldn't do it. And if the movie comes out, I don't think I'll see that either. I went on a Tuesday. It was $5. I was like, here, take my $5. This does nothing for the ultimate. And this movie will do well. And women are going to it for like girls' nights. Yeah, Ryan and Reynolds date nights. and Blake Lively, the first couple to be one, two at the box office since. Uh, what's my man's name? He's now Bruce Willis and his wife. Demi Moore? At the time. Demi Moore. At the time. Demi Moore was in Ghost, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. But I feel like they tried to have a little Barbenheimer moment with this movie. And and if you want to get into the the Barbenheimer of it, sure. Oppenheimer is a very, very serious subject of a man who created a weapon that killed many, many people. And... uh, This is a true text I sent a friend yesterday. I have had two thoughts this week. One, I don't understand how I am of the same species of the people who came up with the idea to create nuclear weapons in order to strive for peace. Like our brains just operate so differently, right? And two, I don't understand how I am the same species with people who see it ends with us and say that is the greatest movie they've ever seen. Wow. Because I have so. seen I have seen greatest movie I've ever seen. Never been so emotional wow. watching a movie. I'm I could see this again. Why? Wow. Why? I know. So not only do you silence the far right, but you hate I hate women. You hate women also. I know, and I don't I don't like hating something that I love women having hobbies and joys. I just don't get this one. It's tough for me. And they're gonna come for me and I don't want to want them to just go read your just read anything else the jessica benson show with cj hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m